Everybody loves a good penny stock. The thoughts of being able to make hundreds and hundreds of percents on your investment in what can be as short as a few months or a couple of years. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the clone line to prove that fact. And today we're gonna to be speaking about a stock that I've never seen anybody speak about before. It is called Drive Shack. You can see on the monthly chart, this company is up 58.87%. It is trading at about $2.24 as of right now, and it has a market cap of only 150 million. What do these guys do? Well, the hint is in the name. They are a public golf course company. Now, I let the patrons know that I was looking into these guys about a week ago. When I did it, I think it was probably right around here. They're at about 180, 190 a share. So there's already been a nice little run up from when I initially looked at them. But when we're speaking about penny socks, they inherently carry quite considerable risk, let's be honest. So I wouldn't want to open up even a small position, even a feeler position without having a considerable amount of research. So let's get that out there straight off the bat. It's a penny sock. It carries a whole lot of risk. Why are they of interest to me? Right before we get into answering that question, can I please ask you to hit that juicy like button, drop me a comment down below my friends, and please, if you are new around here, hit that juicy red subscribe button and join the family of investors. Why not? If you're interested in joining my private Discord group, please hit the first link in the description, my friends. There's over over 600 investors in there now, you will get access to my buy and sell alerts. You will find out if I decide to buy this company potentially as early as today. You will also get access to over 40 private channels. It's a juicy community full of amazing information. And if you're interested in getting four free stocks, hit the second link in the description and sign up to Weeble. Just for signing up, you get two free stocks, but when you deposit $100, you get two more, and they are valued up to $1,600 each. So why am I interested in this company here, Drive Shack, a $2 stock with a $150 million market cap? Well, as we just said, they're in golf. We want to get into exactly what they do, but when the Roni hit, this is something I've been asking myself for a long time. If this is prolonged, okay, if there is more lockdowns, what industries do I think are going to do quite well? And I have for a long time now talked golf. It's outdoors, you know, it's easy to socially distance. They could stay open much easier than a lot of other amenities. And it's a very popular sport. I myself very recently got into golf partially because of lockdowns. I went and played around the golf gym today. I'm going to the driving range later on. I got myself a bag of golf clubs. I have this stress ball, this stress golf ball. For my birthday, I got golf balls with my initials on them. And I know for a fact that a lot of people are in a similar position to me. A lot of us gave up a lot of our hobbies over the lockdown because we physically cannot do them. And a lot of people took up golf. Now, a lot of people will ask me, why not Callaway? Why not ticker symbol ELY? That's a video for a completely different day. Nothing against this company. In fact, I could see myself also investing in these at some stage. But today, I want to focus on this company here, Drive Shack. So their Q3 earnings came out recently, okay? And with that came out this earnings presentation. So it gives us a good idea of, you know, how the last quarter went. Because let's be honest, it was under very tough circumstances. And it also outlines plans for next year. Some of which look very exciting to me. Now guys, I'm not going to keep saying this, but I do just want to stress yet again, this is a penny stock. They carry considerable risk. If I show you the six month chart, they were a $3 stock not too long ago. They came all the way down to just about $1 a share. And if you want to go a little bit further, back to the 22nd of June 2018, they actually had all time highs of nearly $8 a share. So they were in a downtrend before the Roni hit, okay? So making it again a little bit more risky, but also potentially leading to even more upside. So let's just throw ourselves into this Q3 earnings presentation. So the third quarter highlights, okay? Total company Q3 revenue of $66 million. So again, right off the bat, our revenue was quite low and that was down 11% from Q3 of 2019. Now this for me, I'm actually happy with that. A lot of companies would have done a lot worse in this industry or you know, entertainment industries in general. AGC's momentum continued with strong Q3 results highlighting the tremendous demand for traditional golf. In October, we completed the sale of our Rancho San Joaquin CA golf course for $33.6 million in net cash proceeds. Now, this to me actually is a good thing. We will get into why later on. We've restabilized our business amid the current environment, which is the Roni, positioning us to advance our growth plan and goals set forward in early 2020. And again, we're gonna get into this, but 2021 looks like quite an important year. We have a relatively unlevered balance sheet providing us with a solid financial foundation to pursue growth. Obviously, when we're looking at a penny stock, we're gonna be looking at it as a growth stock, so that's something we want to see straight away, no exceptions. So our courses and venues, okay? They own one course, least 34 and manage 25. Current venues, Orlando, Florida, open Q2 2018. 2019, 
Rally NC, Richmond VA, West Palm, Florida. Committed venues, New Orleans. Now this is on hold for 2021, but 2022, we're looking at Manhattan and we have an active pipeline of 60 plus identified targets. And we have five additional targets for 2021. So they've emerged from the Roni disruption as an industry leader. This is what I really want to speak about. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, even before I started playing golf, I thought there could be a good opportunity to invest in some golf related stocks. So there's been a shift in consumer preferences for outdoor activities and there is limited overlap with other guests. Okay, some of their key differentiations, outdoor open air format, partitioned suite style bays and limited on-course guest overlap. So you can see why these guys would be able to do well in the current environment under the conditions laid out by Roni. It's out there and in open air. Much, much easier to control than, you know, a bar, for example, or a restaurant, a concert, a movie theater. It's all weather as it provides cover, limited guest overlap, which again is so, so important. The last thing you want to do is go out and be touching off hundreds and hundreds of other people. I mean, think about it guys, if you went out to a bar, you're gonna be so close to so many people. It's social, it's competitive, and it's physical activity. A lot of things that a lot of people want right now and will do for a considerable period of time going forwards. This is an industry guys that was growing quickly before the Roni, but it's also an industry that should be accelerated by the Roni. So how they've executed their growth priorities in a new environment. They aggressively manage costs and implemented measures to sustain liquidity. This is something that everybody has had to do, okay? It's been incredibly important, but especially for a company like these guys. Like, when you're a penny stock, when you're at the stage of the life cycle they are, there's always potential to go bankruptcy. Now it's looking like that is not going to happen. So they close the sale for the $35 million AGC course, as we said earlier on. Strengthening the balance sheet. Restructured AGC and DS teams. Lowered field fixed labor costs by 40%. Significantly reduced expenses and spend. Leverage their existing resources, something you love to see, something you have to see. Enforced strong capital allocation discipline and elected not to pay preferred equity dividends. Perfect. So they restate Stabilize the business amid the current environment to position themselves for growth. One very exciting thing right here, hire the CFO to lead financing process. Beautiful. They could not have done this at a better time. Selectively advance critical path deliverables for new venue openings while delaying other non-critical expenditures to preserve liquidity. Again, it's all about that liquidity. It's all about that cash right now, guys. And that's why a CFO and a good CFO is going to be incredibly important. Creating innovative programs to drive traffic to increase revenue, which has worked and you will see that. Launching online single bay reservation platform, reinstating successful promotions to increase revenue, and develop the Orlando reopening plan. Awesome, managing cash, managing their position as well as possible. And the result of all of this, we believe we are poised to advance our growth plan and goals set forward in early 2020. So they plan to focus capital and resources on puttery concept. Expect to open seven puttery locations, including Dallas and Charlotte by the end of 2021. Seven new locations. Puttery, Dallas and Charlotte are currently underway, evaluating real estate pipeline for the remaining locations and exploring various options for a 2021 funding plan. Awesome. So guys, lots of good, but do understand that the reason they have had to do all these things is because they're not in a very good position. They're not in a privileged position. It's going to be a tough uphill fight for a while in my opinion but when you're chasing the big growth when you're chasing you know the, the biggest potential that's always going to be the case so their operations update obviously very important right now strong demand continues for traditional golf public horses plus 15 percent revenue from green and cart fees okay plus 10 percent daily fee rounds private courses plus 48% member sales versus Q3 2019. Remember guys, I'm telling you the Roni has sped things up for this industry as a whole. And plus 25% total rounds versus Q3 2019. And you can see when you compare these numbers to Q1 and Q2 of 2020 as well, the growth has been very, very quick. Look how much better Q3's been towards Q2. So the Orlando reopening plan, this is important. As we gear up for the reopening, we are focusing on initiatives that would increase brand awareness and visits to the venue coupled with various revenue driving promotions and events. Partnering with the developer of the 17 square mile Lake Nona community surrounding our venue to further integrate with local businesses and residents. Very important right now, you need people through the doors. Creating special promotions and experiences, including gameplay pass, live music, all of that kind of thing that, again, get people in the doors. And they plan to reopen the venue this month in December, which would be awesome going into next year. Look at this guys, okay? They launched two bay package in mid-September to encourage small event bookings in all Drive Shack locations. Since launching, event revenue has increased four times. Again, I see a company that's taken the initiative, you know, 
They're not giving up. They're taking everything and trying to make the best of it. So the online reservation platform, this should be a given at this stage, but they plan to launch new online booking platform for single bay reservations in December. And the platform will allow them to drive incremental visitors, increase traffic during off-peak times and enhance predictability of labor needs makes a whole lot of sense i'm very very happy to see this being integrated now so they're prioritizing innovation of new ways for guests to compete again guys just just getting people into the doors making people want to go to your location and this is being done through you know tournaments the drive shack open a monster hunt challenge loads of things to just get people through the doors so they want to give more updates on the pottery plans okay which is going to be so important for next year if you do plan on investing in this company pottery will combine competitive socializing f and b and technology to create one remarkable experience. Launching pottery format for urban markets where a drive track venue would not fit. And it expands store potential by hundreds of markets due to vast availability of real estate at a potential discount, shorter development timelines, they can go up a lot quicker, less capital risk, and higher development yields. Awesome. So their target EBITDA for drive shack venues is four to six million dollars and pottery venues is two to three million dollars. Our goal is to build DS Manhattan and 50 plus pottery venues by the end of 2024. They are looking for huge growth. So that's why again, I've been stressing the importance of these pottery venues, okay? Looking at total EBITDA of 100 to 150 million dollars by 2024, the drive shack venues will be looking at 20 to 30 million. And as they continue to open additional pottery venues, we expect yields will be even higher due to learned and scaled efficiencies in construction and operations. Makes a lot of sense. The longer you do something, the more efficient it gets. Now, this. We believe we are positioned to accomplish our growth plans and goals set forward in early 2020. As of the end of October, they have $44 million of unrestricted cash on hand. Not the most in the whole world, let's be honest. Our goal over the next six months is to gain proof of concept for the pottery. We believe we can do this with our current capital structure and liquidity outlook through the end of Q1 2021. So something's going to have to happen by Q4 and Q1 over the next five to six months. Thereafter, we expect our growth plan will be supported by future cash flow from operations and new capital funding. We are currently exploring various options for new capital funding in 2021. This is going to be something that if you do decide to invest in, you're going to have to keep up to date with. This could affect you very good or very bad. So our next phase, the goal in the next 12 months, okay? So the seven pottery stores by 2021. Project total cost of $50 million to complete our 2021 revenues. And based on our plan, we expect run rate evidence of $29 million and an enterprise value of about $437 million. I mean, we have a market cap of $150 million right now. And that would leave them with an equity value of about $280 million. So total company SGNA was $8 million, the decrease of 38% from Q3 2019. I expect things to go up again quite considerably in Q4. That's why I'm really looking at them right now. Now, the average analyst gives Drive Shack a strong buy rating and the average price target is $4. Now, another thing I found out when I went and looked at this, number of hedge funds with DS positions, okay? This goes all the way back to the end of 2016. It's been going get down continually, but what I want to show you is that from the first quarter of this year, a lot more have been buying. Now, there has been a bit of a sell-off, but look, they went from three all the way up to nine. A lot more hedge funds have been getting involved. Currently, we're sitting at seven. Now, I know that's not an, a lot of hedge funds in the grand scheme of things, but there still has been more getting bullish on this company than there has been for literally a couple of years at this stage. So, look, guys, I just wanted to make this video just to make you guys aware that I'm looking at this because I think it's a bit different. It's not something I think really anybody has spoken about. Most people probably aren't aware of the company. This is definitely not me advising you to go out and buy this company. It's so high risk. It is a penny stock. If you guys know me, you know I like the risk. And even I haven't invested in this company as of recording this video. And of course, I'm not a financial advisor. So please, my friends, do your own research. Form your own thoughts and opinions. Don't just listen to me because I'm just a random guy on the internet who hasn't even invested in the company yet. If you did enjoy the video, you enjoyed watching something a little bit different, maybe you took some value, please do consider hitting that like button for me. Drop me that comment down below and subscribe if you're new around here. It really helps me out. If you do want to know if I end up buying this company or any other company, hit that first link in the description and sign up to my Patreon. You'll get full access to that private Discord group we spoke about earlier on. And if you want your four free stocks from Weeble, hit the second link in the description. Deposit $100. It's that easy. Anyway, my friends, I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. I will see you for another video very soon. Peace.